Hi everybody, I'm Ryan Smith. I'm a real estate agent and an educator here in Calgary, and this video is part of an ongoing series dedicated to buying, selling, and owning a condominium. Today's topic, do condominiums require a real property report? Before we discuss whether or not a condominium transaction requires a real property report, let's talk about what a real property report is. So a real property report, or an RPR, is a plan of survey. It's prepared by a survey company. And on that survey, it will show the boundaries of the property as well as any improvements that are on that land. Those improvements could include things like the, the house itself, any garage structure, the fence, the deck, the sidewalk, etc. Now in a single family real estate transaction in Alberta, the standardized contracts that we use, which are prepared by the Alberta Real Estate Association, require the seller to provide a copy of a real property report, which shows the current state of improvement on the land to the buyer. This real property report has to be stamped with a stamp of compliance from the municipality in which that property is located. The stamp of compliance ensures that there are no encroachments that is that none of the structures on the subject property are encroaching onto neighboring lands. To put this another way, if your garage is built partly onto your neighbor's property or your fence is encroaching on the city's property, you have a problem and it needs to be resolved. One way to solve your problem at this point would be to remove the encroachment. Now it might be possible to do that with a fence, but obviously very impractical or impossible with a garage. The alternative to removing the encroachment would be to have an encroachment agreement signed with your neighbor or the municipality as the case may be. But either way, the encroachment must be dealt with in order for the RPR to be compliant. The use of real property reports is a standardized practice in a real estate transaction in Alberta, and this may not be the case in other parts of Canada. However, the reason that we've implemented them is that they are the best way to protect a buyer in a transaction by ensuring that they are not inheriting problems with the improvements that are on their property. So now that we understand what a real property report is, let's get back to our original question in the video. Is an RPR required for a condominium real estate transaction? Well, the answer is it depends. In a previous uh, video within this series, we explored the idea that there are two types of condominiums, conventional and bare land. And as a quick refresher, a conventional unit is defined as a three-dimensional cube of ownership that exists in space. Its boundaries are things like walls and ceilings and floors. Whereas a bare land condominium is a plot of dirt and its boundaries are defined by survey markers or pins that are placed in the ground. If you're buying or selling a conventional condominium unit, then no real property report is required. However, if you're buyer, buying or selling a bare land unit, then you do require one. So the question becomes, how do you know the difference and how do you know if your unit is conventional or bare land? The answer to the question is, you need to consult your condominium plan. Now, a skilled real estate professional such as myself should be able to quickly analyze your plan and determine, is your unit conventional or bare land and is an RPR required for a real estate transaction? So the big question in all of this is, why is this information important to you? As a quick refresher, if you're buying or selling a conventional condominium unit, the RPR is not required. However, if you're buying or selling a bare land condominium unit, it is a requirement of the transaction. Many real estate lawyers report significant delays in closing because the buyer and the seller did not realize that a real property report was required as part of their bare land transaction. A real property report is an expensive thing with an average cost of approximately six to $800 for the survey with a compliance stamp. And this cost can be a very unwelcome surprise to a seller who didn't realize that they were required to pay for it. As I mentioned before, the best way to protect yourself as a buyer or a seller in a real estate transaction is by working with a highly knowledgeable and highly skilled realtor who understands the intricacy of condominium transactions and in particular, how a real property report can play a significant role. Thanks for watching today's video. You'll find this and the rest of our content on our website at communitycalgary.ca in addition to our ongoing condominium blog.